Hey everybody, this is Bailey Wiki, and this is another Design With Me Foundry installment. We're primarily using the Castle and Cave expansion from the November 2022 release. As a reminder, most of this content is in the Towns module in the Actor Compendium. Your folders may have changed by the time you see this, but just type in your search for the asset name that you're looking for, and you should quickly find the folder that they call home. And if you ever want to see everything from this release, just go to the Bailey Wiki Maps Towns scene compendium, past releases, to get to these inventory scenes. Let's get started. All right, so now we're going to use the cave expansion system again, but we're going to make a new, a new um, map here. I'm going to drag out one of our rooms, and in this case, it's already got a filter applied to it. I'm going to delete that filter. You can delete filters on selected macro. It's in the nuts and bolts and compendium. I'm going to go to that middle tile there, and I'm going to make it invisible uh, because, in fact, I think I might have just deleted it because I'm just going to want to use the stone floor in this case. Now, I want this room to be bigger, so I'm going to set it to 1.5 times its width and height. And that's going to make the entire room larger size for me. Now, there's a bug in Foundry right now that doesn't let tiles go past the border of the scene. I mean, wasn't aware of that when I was making the scene. So it it nudged the the tile off of its alignment with the walls. And so here I am figuring that out right now when I try to move it back to the right spot. Boundary won't let me. I think it's a bug that's going to be fixed. Hope it's not intentional because there's a lot that we do to take advantage of pushing tiles underneath the, uh, the padding. But in this case, I'm going to have to bite the bullet and change my scene dimensions. So if I make my scene a little bit wider, I can drag my room out to a place that it can actually fit. And then I can adjust it to the, uh, the walls that were not lined up before. So I want to move. It's easier to move the tile than the wall. So I'm going to move my tile until I see that it's, it's lined up to the right spot. And it's going to, this is a very big tile. Remember, if I had a token on this, it would be very, very small. And so I'm snapping to half grid. So it does take a little bit of adjustment, but hopefully without that foundry bug, you don't have to do too much of that. Now we are going to create some fire, some fire effects here. So we're going to go into our actors, pull out a fire tile set. This is in the towns module in compendium if you're ever looking for it outside of your sidebar. And uh, once we drag them in, then we're going to release them from their token by opening up the token attacher UI, hitting the trash can there. And I'm going to start with this one. I kind of like it already. It's got even the right effect that I want. And I'm going to drag these other ones in. I'm going to use um, my left and right bracket with the quick scale to increase the size of this uh, of this tile. And then I'm going to go into my custom macros and look up fire tile. And I'm going to try the uh, fire tile two without transparency. And that gives me that nice sort of glowing edge effect that you see there. And I recommend if you're ever curious how I did these to take a look. Now I'm not going to delete this particular token or this tile. I want to use it. I'm going to um, basically make a copy of it because I want to have this little fire channel kind of up here coming out of the wall. And I'm going to fire, apply the same fire tile effect there. And that gives me this nice sort of effect. Like there was something engineered in this room, right? Whether through spell casting or ancient arts, we've got these sort of carved channels. And I think for right now, we're going to delete the rest of those tiles because we're not going to use them. Now we're going to bring more fire tiles in because I'm going to want an effect to happen over the course, uh, over this whole map. And I want this whole map to be sort of lit on fire. And once I remove these or liberate them from their, their token attacher, I can start moving them around. And you can see the fire doesn't affect the entire dimension of the tile. It just affects certain parts of it. I like that. It makes it look more organic. 
it lets me take just a couple of tiles and apply them in different places and feel like that fire is sort of actually enveloping that sort of that physical form, right? And I don't certainly have to use all of these, but I'm going to experiment, see what I feel about these. This one, I actually want to make more of a channel, like the one uh, over there. So you can see, once I apply it, the, you know, it does a pretty good job of, of becoming a channel of, of fire underneath the, the rock. And I'm just experimenting with where I can place it sort of believably. And I might have this channel sort of open up, um, especially after I have the players interact with, with an interaction that I'm planning a little bit later. So like maybe it bars that entire egress point. By the same macro there, now it's really starting to look like the floor is breaking up. And it's kind of that simple. Now we're going to apply some fire to other parts of the cave. Not that I have to use these particular tiles to do it. Not that I have to use every tile in the set to do it. You can see I'm just kind of playing around with how these things look. just to give you an idea of how I would use these things. You can, of course, use drawings as well. Because tiles can be um, made smart with Monk's Active Tiles, I, that's why I built these things. I feel like there's more that we can get out of uh, at least having tiles in our toolkit for, for making fires. I have made fires with drawings before. You guys can go see some of my tutorials on that if you haven't seen those before. And now I'm going to apply a light effect with some high saturation in the main room. Some high contrast. And then I'm going to replicate that light in some other places just really like the look of this, this cave with this um, high contrast light applied to it. Because it does apply the, you know, the same lighting to the tokens and everything else, just that much more immersive. Okay, now we're going to work on some other plot hooks. Just kind of evaluating the space and figuring out what kind of story do I want to, do I want to tell. Here's the sword and the stone plot hook. And by all means, let me know in the comments if there's some other plot hooks that I can create. But you can see when you click on it, it uh, makes the stone appear disappear. You can have that then give a sword to your player. But in this case, um, besides that, I'm going to have it uh, trigger an effect, essentially lighting the cave on fire. Decided that tile fit better there, that spot. That's feeling pretty good.
Now, of course, we need a way into our cave. In this case, I'm just going to put a cave entrance here. You can tag that entrance uh, with tagger. And you can have that be a destination, right? So we'll call this Mage Cave Inn. And that could be a teleport destination from another map. Or you may just simply start your players on that spot. That's how you can link these maps together pretty easily. Maybe this is the cave from our... Um, from our ice cave where they went down into that molten area. Maybe this is where they find their way into. I'm gonna set our background to black, start really building the ambiance here. And we're gonna walk through our cave just to make sure that everything checks out. We're happy with everything that we see. And in this case, we want to say on movement, we want to hurt these tokens. So any tokens that move through that fire, we want them to hurt. So negative space is important. And then the double brackets on both sides of the D4. We're going to this, just have this automatically hurt them. As they walk over it, it's just going to start hurting them. It's not going to warn the DM or anyone. It's just they're just going to, whether they notice or not, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't let them know that they're taking damage. But you can certainly add that to the effect if you want to. And then we're going to copy this all this logic. We're using mass edit in this case. We hit shift C and then we hit shift V. And it will essentially um, let us apply all the same logic to these other fire tiles. That's why we did that. And now we're taking damage from those as well. We've got to give our player some more damage because we're hurting him too much. This test player does have vision enabled. Make sure you've got vision enabled on your test player. If you have players that walk around with dark vision and things like that, you can also create uh, test players with dark vision in case you want to test. Sometimes that can um, change some things for you. In this case, we're going to want to apply that same kind of molten lava sound. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, now we're getting our ambiance pretty good. You know, we've got some more magic circles that we can pick from. In this case, we're going to pick one of the new uh, circles that gives us scripts. The script, we are going to change its color. We're going to pick a color actually from the fire and make it nice and orange. And then we're going to use our left bracket to shrink it down. Just want this to be like there's, you know, there's something really sort of a, an old magic really engineered here to conjure something or trap something. We're going to make it just a little bit faded so it picks up some of that background. Right, it feels like that, you know, writing is really sort of embedded in the background. And then we're going to experiment with some of our filters here. That one seems a little bit too much. This one, we're going to have to increase our opacity to pick up more of that fire. There's something kind of cool about this. It feels like almost like the, the magic writing is sort of lit um, you know, by magic, maybe, or proximity to this fire. But I think at the end of the day, you might try the electric sway. You can see it, it covers more of the, and we get rid of the other filter. So it, it covers all the lighting. It gives us this sheen. If we decrease our opacity, it still gives us that magic effect, but we see more of the, uh, of the runes kind of activating. 
I'm just going to kind of slide this to where it's maybe barely perceptible that that there's there's some writing there. All right, that looks pretty good. And if I fire this macro, toggle fire tiles on and off, you can see it effectively does that. It takes those just the fire tiles and the edges because they are tagged with fire and it will toggle them off. Just as a reminder, that macro was built. I built it with Adif's macro builder that comes with um, his uh, mass edit module. Okay, so we want when this gets activated to run a macro. And in this case, the macro is going to be the togger, toggle fire tiles on and off. I'm going to run it as a GM. And because that's a smart macro, it will toggle, right? So you can click it, it'll toggle everything on like you see. And when you click it again, it will look for the same tags and know if it should toggle it off. So I'll make some more adjustments for this releases, but if you guys like this, let me know and have fun making your maps.